Welcome to part two of my Innovations in Sound Synthesis series. In this one, I feature Synth of Sorts, which, as the name suggests, uses sorting algorithms as its sound generation engine. But first, a quiz. What do all of these have in common? That's right. Bucket, shell, pancake and circle are all types of sorting algorithms. And now, a sorting algorithm in action. Here's a bunch of random sample points joined together with lines. Each time I press a button, the computer generates a new set of random values. Now since during the creation of each set, any sample value is as likely to get chosen as any other, if we were to let a sorting algorithm loose on this, we'd expect to end up with something looking like a diagonal line, as all the samples get arranged from smallest to largest. Here goes. Yep, as expected, we get a kind of drunk line. Since every sorting algorithm sorts in a different way, how it visibly progresses to the end state also varies in each case, as does the length of time it takes to get there, even though we finish up with the same result if the starting values are identical. Now let's start off with a set of samples which form a sine wave and apply a sort to this. So sonically, we begin with this, but end up with this something approximating a sawtooth. I created Synth of Sorts to be able to play the waveform as it transforms between these bookends, so to speak. What is initially displayed in the app window is the repeating pattern on which the sort is applied. We can choose anywhere between half a cycle of a sine wave up to 15 cycles and have the pattern start at different points in the cycle. Notice that because we have the same number of samples available to us per set, regardless of whether we render one or multiple cycles, when we're up around the 15 cycles, we lose a lot of resolution, such that each cycle isn't really a sign anymore. Next, we select a sorting algorithm to apply to the pattern. As the sort proceeds, a snapshot of each iteration is stored in a wavetable. Then, we can play the wavetable by scanning through it. We can play it from a MIDI keyboard at lower pitches by interpolating the wavetable, which basically means slotting samples between existing values to make the wavetable longer according to the note being played. I've ensured that the graphical sort progress is always synced up with the audio playback so we can get a good sense of what's going on. And now for some results. I've had the best outcomes with bucket, shell, pancake and circle sorts so far, so they're the ones I've focused on here. There's no external effects, filters, envelopes or any other kind of post-processing applied to these sounds. It's just the raw sorting output. So there we have it. Is this going to replace traditional FM or subtractive synthesis? Well, no. Does it give you something a little bit different, a bit extra to work with? Absolutely. As you've heard, the technique seems to be good for creating bright, brassy timbres with some interesting movement. Here's a few of these sounds layered together, for example. But as I demonstrated in my previous video, what's truly fascinating about all this is to listen to processes which were never meant to be heard when they were first devised. For example, listening to the bursting and spiking behavior of neurons, or functions that create different graphical shapes just by changing a few parameter values, or processes which trace out chaotic paths, or even converting sample values to binary, shuffling the bits around, and converting them back to sample values again. To this list, we can now add the sonification of the process of sorting. 